Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Visual Effects Craft. In the previous video, I show you this effect and how many particles we had. I, I think I crank it up up to almost 105 million particles. I also been playing with crank it even more. And it was performing really well. I'm really happy with the results. Right now, I have it set to 5 million particles and it's performing really well as well. And I'm running on a PC that has a pretty powerful graphic card. It's an RTX 2080. So, what I'm going to do today is I want to show you how we can extend our knowledge and learn how to expose variables and properties through the inspector. So, for instance, right now I have these periodic total times that I can, you know, that I have associated. And for instance, this one right here is, is associated with the attraction speed. So I want to change that. And instead of using this node that allows me to spe specify a minimum and a maximum number over a specific time, I'm going to be basically converting this to use a variable. So I'm just going to delete this node. And I'm going to click on this. Make sure that you click on the, on the black port. Once you click on the black port, you're going to get this little box right here. Then you click on the plus symbol. And when you click on the plus symbol, you're going to see that you're going to have a lot of different options for different types of properties that we can add to the black port. So for instance, this one that I want to associate with is going to be the attraction speed. I know that that one is a float. So I'm going to create a float. I'm going to look in here for a float. And then I'm also going to rename it. And I'm just going to call it attraction speed. So we can just say attraction speed. And we can, you can see that it says that it's a flow. There's other properties inside that you can also look at. So if we want to expand it, we can say whether we want to expose this in the inspector or not. We can say, you know, what the value it's going to be to start. We can also give it a, a tooltip. So if I say tooltip, let's say that I wanted to do, I know that this is related to physics. So I'm just going to say physics. Physics, and then I can just call it attraction SP. So it's going to be my tooltip. And then what if I, instead of actually putting negative 0.2, I, I add a range. So the range is going to go from, and this is something that I'm just making it up. It's going to go from negative 20 to 20. And for instance, if I go here and I change this to a negative number, you're going to see the graph is changing quite a bit. The particles are, the attraction speed is going on the opposite direction. And if I go all the way up, you can see that now they're going in. And it just creates really, really cool effects. So if we have the flexibility to change that in the inspector, we don't need to open the graph. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo what I did. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag. So I'm basically clicking, left clicking, and then not letting go, and then dragging and drop it into the graph. If you look at this dot right here, we're going to be attaching that with the attraction speed. And then the other thing that I'm also going to do is I'm going to click on this expose. And as soon as I click on the expose, we're going to be able to look in the hierarchy, look at the object that has the visual effect and you're going to see that now I have the attraction speed that is exposed. So what if I wanted to go to a negative number because I wanted the particles just to go crazy. You can see that I can change it just by doing that in the inspector. I don't have to go to the graph. In fact, I could close this and this will still work. I could go to a positive number. And if you've done games in Unity or applications, you know how much power you get when you start exposing things in the inspector. You can just, you have more flexibility when it comes to that. You can test quicker. So this is one of the features that I really like about visual effects graph is that you can expose some of the values just like you can do in the shaders as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna change this to, let's just do negative four, I think that's fine for now. Now, what if we wanted to expose something else? Let's just go ahead and find a different type. So we added a value that was of type float. What if we wanted to do something like maybe let's do color. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol. I'm going to go ahead and select color. And I have blank color. So I'm just going to do, you know, the name is going to be blank color. And I like to type the names as, you know, as, as if they were variables. So I'm used to using, you know, capitals after every word. So make sure that you follow, you know, you follow a standard so that it makes sense to you when you're working with it. So 
The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a default, but I'm not going to use the default values. I could use the RGB value that is in the color here, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to make one up. I'm just going to keep one close to the color that I'm seeing. I think that's close enough, maybe plus one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to be changing the tooltip. So I'm just going to say blend color. I'm also going to expose it. And then I'm just going to drag it and drop it here. And then I'm going to connect it with the, with the actual blend color. So now that I change the blend color, we can click on our object in the hierarchy and we can go here and we can start tweaking that without actually having to go to the graph. What if I wanted to increase the intensity? I can change the intensity. What if I wanted to try a blue? Maybe a blue matches with the game that I'm developing. Maybe I do something like, or maybe even a red. I do a red. What if I wanted to do the intensity pretty high? What if I wanted to change the attraction speed because I think I wanted to go fast and this is a space, so we want to go really crazy. Or maybe we wanted to go more subtle. I want to go back and maybe I want to just change a little bit more. Or maybe I want to animate these. You can do, you know, there's, there's just so much that we can do with this functionality. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, I'm going to change the intensity, and we can go back to the color or something like that like what i had we can probably just increase the intensity a little bit so that it looks cool awesome so let's try one more and then we'll call it good i'm gonna do let's do a vector three this one has a vector three x y and z so i'm gonna click on the plus symbol i'm gonna go to vector three and i'm gonna rename it this is gonna be the scale at y at x y z so i'm just gonna call it scale x y z and i'm gonna just drag it and drop it and then connect it with scale and I'm going to expose it. I'm going to, I'm not going to add a tooltip. There's really no reason. If I hover over these, it won't be in a tooltip. If I hover over this one, you'll see the tooltip. And then the same thing with the one above. If I go and find the one above and I hover over it, I do have a tooltip, so I should see it. The other cool thing is those tooltips also transfer to the inspector, so you can see them right here. Maybe you put something, you know, that is more descriptive and it can, it can show somebody what the property is if it doesn't really mean you know if the variable name doesn't really mean much but for the most part variable names should be explicit enough so what i'm going to do now is i have my scale i associate it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here to my inspector i'm going to enable it and then let's go ahead and change the particle size maybe we'll just do one maybe we'll just do five you can see that as i'm doing that it's changing the particle size i'm going to go Maybe we go, you know, to a negative number. You can see how that is changing. Or maybe we'll just do two. Or let's just go ahead and go 0 0.05. And what we'll do is we'll just copy that and then paste it on Y and also on Z. And we can go back in here and just increase the intensity a tiny bit more. And we can do a different color. But you get the idea. You can see how we can start we, we get to we're getting a lot of control on the on the graph by by doing this so that's everything that i wanted i wanted to show you today guys if you have any questions about what i just showed you on the graph let me know in the comments and also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers also a great community great forums and also if you can support me in patreon that would mean a lot to me not only because you're supporting me, but because it's going to allow me to bring you a lot more content. So thank you very much, guys, and have a great day.